everyone, Dr. Bree again. I'm here today to show you a few different stretches and exercises that you can do for thoracic outlet syndrome. So we're gonna start with some stretches of the scalene muscles. And these muscles are one, they're one of the places that you can get trapped for thoracic outlet syndrome. Um, there's a few other areas, including the first rib and your pec minor, but these muscles are called accessory breathing muscles, which means that when your diaphragm, which is your primary breathing muscle, isn't able to do as much as it should, for example, in cases of pregnancy where the belly is just grown bigger than it usually is, and now there's less space to move, these muscles up here, along with this other one called your sternocleidomastoid or your SCM, will try to do more of the work, essentially. So we're gonna try and work on calming these down and getting the diaphragm to do a little bit more. Okay, so one stretch you can do for the scalene is, so you have three scalenes, anterior, middle, and posterior. So one thing you can do is you can, it's very easy, you can do this anywhere, you can put your hand at the affected side behind your back, okay, and then you can just side bend your head without adding any rotation. Now the purpose here of the hand behind the back is to fix your scapula or to fix your shoulder blade and bring it down because sometimes when these muscles are tight, we have a tendency to hike the shoulder back up. So we don't wanna do that here. If you, don't, if you don't find this comfortable, some people doing this internal rotation is a little unpleasant. You can simply um, be seated and hold onto the edge of a seat. That's an option as well. Okay, so holding here and adding the side bend. That hits the middle, middle scalene. Now, if you wanna get the posterior scalene in the back, you're simply gonna to look towards your opposite armpit. So you're adding a little bit of flexion and rotation. And then lastly, if you want to get the anterior scalene in the front, you side bend, and then you kind of turn your nose up to the ceiling. It's a little hard to do when you're talking. So typically, I'm not a super big fan of soft tissue stretches in my practice, to be honest with you, but there are times um, and places where they're indicated. And typically when we're looking at stretching soft tissue like muscle, you want a minimum of 30 seconds of a stretch with a maximum of 90 seconds for about two to three sets. However, in this case, when your symptoms of thoracic outlet syndrome are things like numbness and tingling in the fingers or down the arm, or for some people where their thoracic outlet syndrome is more vascular in nature, um, we don't want to get any um, loss of coloration in the fingers, any feeling like it's going cold. Um, if you're familiar with something called Raynaud's syndrome, sometimes the fingertips can get cold. Um, you can have some claudication, which is pain. So we don't want to trigger that with these situations. It's this fine line of not overstretching the nerve while we're trying to target the muscle. So if you can get from that 30 to 90 second range without symptoms, fantastic. But if you start to get symptoms, you want to ease off. So it doesn't mean you have to stop the motion entirely. It just maybe means instead of going all the way, you come halfway. And you slowly inch your way towards that. So that's one type of exercise. Another one you can do is called the chin tuck. And the chin tuck um, is great for so many different issues. Uh, but for the thoracic outlet syndrome in this case, the purpose is to get these deep neck flexors which are really, really tiny muscles in the front to do a little more of the work so that these accessory muscles I mentioned earlier can calm down. So I'm gonna to turn to the side. And here, what people tend to do a lot is they tend to look down and we don't want that. We're not trying to nod the head. We're simply trying to slide it back, almost like you're giving yourself a double chin on purpose. A few other cues that people like is imagine someone put something that smells gross in front of your nose and you're kind of pulling your head back. Um, or another one I've heard is, let's say you, um, you need your reading glasses or you don't have them on and so you have something here and you kind of have to pull the head back to see it a little more clearly. So those are all great options. Basically what we want to do is make sure these muscles are soft. So you might even put your hand gently on, on these muscles and do the chin tuck to make sure it stays nice and soft. A lot of people are weak here so don't be discouraged if that's you. We just want to build up that endurance. So you can do these chin tucks for endurance for 10 to 15 seconds, or you can do them for repetitions for strength. There's a few options there. Last but not least is getting this diaphragm working. So the best way to do this probably at first is to lay on your side so you're not fighting gravity. Um, but most of us, we don't live laying on our side. We have our symptoms in our day-to-day -day life. 
So put your hands on your side and, or maybe on your, um, your ribs and we wanna try and expand our breath into our ribs, okay? So I'll show you again. Now what we don't want is the chest to breathe a lot. So you know when you're nervous or people who are anxious, they might do that and they have lots of motion happening here. That's not what we want. So way to get um, two for one is to do your scaling stretch and just casually breathe using your diaphragm without getting these muscles on. Okay, so those are just some examples of thoracic outlet syndrome. Keep in mind, there are so many more. If you would like to learn some more, please let me know in the comments. Um, please hit that subscribe button, and I will make sure to give you more content to help you understand what's going on in your body and help you learn how to self-manage it. Um, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up, and as always, thanks for watching.